Hi Steve, the radio blues on events and such. Would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you Joe. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Steve McTighe. I'm a professional actor. Uh, I've played Winston Churchill um, for the last 12 years. Uh, but uh, uh, I'd now like to read to you some uh, sections of speeches that uh, Churchill gave uh, in the early part of uh, 1940. Uh, so, uh, if you'll forgive me, I'm going to step away from being Steve, and now, I am Winston Churchill. On uh, May the 10th, 1940, Neville Chamberlain lost the support of the House. Uh, the King sent for me and asked me to form a government, and I replied that I would. As I went to bed at 3 a.m., I was conscious of a profound sense of relief. At last, I had authority to give directions over the whole running of the war. I felt as if I was walking with destiny, and that all my past uh, 65 years had been but a preparation uh, for this hour and for this trial. Britain is alone. I have wrestled with Hitler, this wicked man, this monstrous product of former wrongs and shame. He has tried to destroy the United Kingdom, as he has already done uh, to Czechoslovakia, Austria, Poland, Holland, Belgium, Denmark, Norway, and now France. Indeed, the French informed me in three weeks England too would have its neck run like a chicken. I said, some chicken, some neck. What kind of people do they think we are? Our pilots, soldiers and sailors, uh, those splendid men and women, uh, this brilliant youth, are uh, magnificent. I would say to the House, as I said to those who have joined the government, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears and sweat. Our struggle is protracted and fierce. Suddenly the scene is cleared, the crash and thunder uh, has for the moment, uh, but only for the moment, uh, died away. A miracle of deliverance achieved by valour, uh, by perseverance, uh, by perfect discipline, uh, by faultless service, uh, by resource, by skill, by unconquerable fidelity, is manifest to us all. The Royal Air Force uh, recently engaged the main strengths of the German Air Force and inflicted upon them losses. Uh, at least uh, four to one. I will pay my tribute to these young airmen now. Uh, may it not also be that the cause of civilization itself uh, will be defended uh, by the skill and devotion of a few thousand airmen. There never has been, uh, I suppose, in all of the world, in all the history of war, uh, such an opportunity uh, for youth. The Knights of the Round Table, the Crusaders, all fall back into the past, uh, not only distant, uh, but prosaic. These young airmen go forth every morn to defend their native land, holding in their hands uh, these instruments of colossal and shattering power, of whom it may be said, every morn brought forth a noble chance, but every chance are brought forth a noble night. These airmen deserve our gratitude, as do all the brave men and women who, in so many ways, and on so many occasions, are ready, men continue ready, to give life and all for their native land. The gratitude of every home in our island, uh, in our empire, and indeed throughout the world, except in the abodes of the guilty, goes out uh, to the British airmen who, undaunted uh, by odds, unwearied in their constant challenge and immortal danger, are turning the tide of the world war uh, by their prowess and by their devotion. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed uh, by so many to so few. We have before us an ordeal of the most grievous kind. We have before us many, many long months of struggle and of suffering. You ask, uh, what is our policy? I will say it is to wage war by sea, land and air, to wage war against a monstrous tyranny never surpassed in the dark lamentable catalogue of human crime. That is our policy. 
You ask, what is our aim? I can answer in one word. It is victory. Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of all terror. Victory however long and hard the road may be. For without victory, there is no survival. Well, let that be realized. No survival for the British Empire. No survival for all the British Empire stood for. No survival for the urgent impulses of the ages that mankind uh, will move forward towards its goal. Uh, but I take up my task with buoyancy and hope. I am sure that our cause will not be suffered to fail amongst men. At this time, I feel entitled uh, to claim the aid of all. And I say, come then, let us go forward together uh, with our united strengths. Even though large tracts of Europe and many old and famous states have fallen, and may fall into the grip of the Gestapo and of all the odious apparatus of Nazi rule, we shall not flag or fail. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with great confidence and great strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. But even if, uh, which I do not for a moment believe, this island or a large part of it was subjugated and starving, then our empire beyond the seas, armed and guarded by the British fleet, will carry on the struggle until in God's good time, uh, the new world with all its power and might uh, steps forth uh, to the rescue and the liberation of the old. What General Vega called the Battle of France is over. I expect the Battle of Britain is about to begin. Upon this battle depends our own British life and the long continuity of our institutions and empire. Very soon, the whole fury and might of the enemy will be turned on us. Hitler knows he will have to break us in this island or lose the war. If we stand up to him, all Europe may be free and the life of the world may move forward into broad, uh, sunny uplands. Uh, but if we fail, then the whole world, including the United States, including all that we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss of a new dark age, made more sinister and perhaps more protracted uh, by the lights of perverted science. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duties and so bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth lasts for a thousand years, uh, men will still say, this was their finest hour. Bless them all, bless them all, the long and the short and the tall. Bless all the sergeants in W.O.1s, bless all the corporals and Mavlinkin sons, cause